I was having a show uh, at a gallery in, in Chelsea and uh, was screening a lot of my films and had drawings all over the walls. And someone who had seen my work before but hadn't seen it sort of all in one place, uh, who was a, an art director uh, at the Times on the Opinion page, came to the show. And um, we, we chatted briefly and then about a week later I got a phone call basically offering me this amazing window. Um, and the, the deal was basically to make a film a month um, that would appear on the opinion page uh, of the New York Times online. It's opened up a, an incredible um, window of, of viewership. You know, more people see one of my films online than all of my films all together at every festival and every museum show and every gallery show put together. It's instant and it's worldwide and I mean, all the obvious things about the web. Uh, have really transformed um, both how the films are seen and, to a certain extent, the way I make them also. This is a scene from uh, the July Times film called uh, Parade, The Parade, and it's, it's a portrait of a man that I filmed in the street. And he just basically walks towards the camera. And there's so much personality in his walk which even though we're just seeing his face the way he moves up and down you you know how old he is you know how he's feeling it's all in the expression and the rhythm of his walk the idea is to find these moments where a person has articulated in their emotion and their appearance so it's just a way to uh, articulate film images using incredibly uh, antiquated but still completely lovely uh, mediums like pastel and watercolor. And it, it has a completely different look and feel than video originated uh, imagery. The, uh, you know, there is something, uh, the tactility of these mediums is evident in every frame. I've been making experimental films most of my life. I come from a family of painters and uh, film was the last frontier, so it was really um, an instant match for me. It's a way to make paintings come alive, which is really exciting. This box represents the entire film, which is a minute and change, a minute twenty something, and it's uh, probably around 1,500 drawings. Um, and it's all on uh, watercolor paper of one sort or another. I'm paid as if I were, you know, a regular columnist, um, I guess probably junior level even. So the money doesn't, it just about covers um, the rent and the, um, and I give half of it to my composer. So it actually, I sort of lose money each month on making these films. The films are very visible and very viewed. And although they aren't profitable unto themselves in terms of, you know, the Times paying me, uh, they have been incredible in, in increasing my um, um, viewership, and that's resulted in a lot of additional work, um, commissions, uh, selling paintings, and DVDs. So, um, I mean, uh, I'm doing now a, a music video uh, for one of my musical heroes, and basically I got my job through the New York Times. It's... Um, you know, he'd, he'd been watching the films on the Times and contacted me through his management, and uh, that would have never happened in any other universe. Um, you know, there's no way he would have seen my films at museums or film festivals. The idea of evolving a language of images that, that isn't necessarily parallel to the language of words, but, but, but something different, something unique unto its own, um, has been the line of exploration for me for the last couple of years. You know, this idea of trying to make these short films that the palette is as much of emotions and memories as it is of uh, paint, pigment, and uh, video. In, in a sense, many of them have become metaphoric or universal home movies in an idealized sense, that, that, that they are memories um, that can go into a, a can, a box, um, and be replayed, brought back to life uh, at any moment. I mean, to me, I guess I mean, that's one of the more interesting things about film to me at the moment. This idea that it does put time in a box.